Welcome to Living a Graceful Life. I'm your host, Denise Medved, and I'm also the creator and founder of the Ageless Grace Brain Health Program that is in 30 countries and 50 U.S. states. I'm here to remind you tonight that it's never too late to begin making choices to create the life that you want. It doesn't matter what your age is, your social status, your financial status. All you have to do is make choices for yourself to begin to invite into your life the things that you would describe as living a graceful life. In our last episode, we talked about what is a graceful life. And of course, a graceful life has to do with the word grace. We talked about the Latin root being gratia or gratus, which basically means pleasing, a pleasing life. And who is that pleasing to? Someone else? A stranger? No, it's a life that's pleasing to you, yourself. We also talked about the fact that there are several definitions of the word grace. One is the physical definition of elegance of movement or poise or balance. And of course, all of us don't see ourselves or maybe not able to have elegance of movement, but we can choose to have movement in a way that gives us a more comfortable life and a life that is full of greater ease and that is more pleasing to us. Another definition of the word grace that we talked about is the fact that it can be a gift that's given to you to make your day or your moment or your life easier, more pleasurable. And that is usually something that is unexpected and undeserved. It's often considered to be a gift from the divine, the grace of God, for example. So what we're talking about tonight is the fact that there are many aspects to living a graceful life. It's not just things or physical surroundings. It's also what do you choose physically for yourself? What about mentally? What about your brain? What about your mind, which is different from your brain? It has to do with awareness and consciousness. What about the choices you make emotionally or the choices that you make for your spirit or spiritually? All of those have to do with living a graceful life. And we will be talking about those things uniquely and individually across the course of the various episodes of living a graceful life. So begin tonight with the basic, the physical body. How can the physical body add to a graceful life? Well, first of all, let's be very clear that if you're in pain, if you have limited range of motion, if you are limited in the way you can move by one thing or another, then that limits the amount of pleasure and grace that you can enjoy in your life. So we want to make the very best choices we can for our physical body so that we can not only do what we need to do, daily living, brushing our teeth, getting dressed, maybe going to a job, caring for our children or our home, but also the things that we really want to do, the things that give us the greatest pleasure and joy in life. Many times we put first the things that we need to do. And sometimes those things are what we consider our responsibilities. The things that we must do because it's the right thing to do or it's what our partner or spouse expects of us or what our children expects or what society or our boss expects from us. But it's equally important to schedule in your life things that nourish you, that fill you with joy and pleasure. And again, tonight we're talking about the physical body and how that can give us greater ease and comfort and pleasure. 
So one of the things I'd like to point out to you at the very beginning is that the two primary things that you always hear that have to do with the physical body are diet and exercise. Now, right away, I am pretty sure, even though I can't see you all, that some of you cringed diet exercise. Oh, I don't like either one of those things. I don't like to be on a diet. I've done that and it's failed. It didn't work. I lost all this weight and then I gained it back again. Or uh, I chose to live on this healthy, healthy diet and it was so unpleasant that I gave it up. I want to eat the things that I want to eat. Vice versa, exercise. Oh, I hate to exercise. I don't like to perspire and sweat. I don't like to have to drive to the gym. I hate the ambiance in a gym. Well, what I'd like to do is replace those words in your mind. I'd like you to replace the words with nourishment and movement. Believe it or not, you move all day long, all kinds of movement. It's a matter of the choices you make about that movement and how you incorporate that movement into your life and how you think about it, your attitude, and how you feel about it, not only through your senses, but through your emotions. Same thing with nourishment. The idea that you're not just eating, but you're nourishing yourself. Listen to that word and what it means, nourishment. Something that allows you to thrive, to enjoy, I-N-J-O-Y, your life, to enjoy your life. So we're going to talk about nourishment and movement tonight. And the key to both of those is choice. Believe it or not, no one is really in charge of those two things except you. You're the one who makes choices about your nourishment and your movement every day. So one of the things that I'd like you to think about, and it's so simple, it's nothing uh, mind boggling, it's very simple. How do you schedule time for yourself for nourishment and movement? Is it an accident? Do you squeeze it in when you can and that doesn't happen every day? Do you hope to do it? At the end of your day, when your work is over and your responsibilities, do you say, oh, I'll do it on the weekend and I'll really pay attention to planning my meals ahead or shopping on the weekend or I'll pay attention to movement and exercise? Well, I would like to propose that this simple little gadget that I think most of us have a smartphone is one of the keys to you being able to put yourself on at least an equal par to the business meeting, the errand, the chore, the PTA meeting or PTSO meeting, the work schedule, whatever it may be, the Zoom call, you can put yourself in here there is a calendar. This is what I use. You can also use a hard copy of a calendar or a day timer or whatever you personally use. And every day, schedule some time for yourself to move. Schedule some time for yourself to make healthy nourishment choices. The movement may be a walk. And when you walk, you want it to be healthy for you. So you don't want to just stroll, neither do you need to power walk and practically kill yourself and push yourself to get through at a certain time, but somewhere in between a brisk, healthy walk where you're looking around you, you're enjoying nature, you're choosing a view, a place, a location that is pleasant and lovely to you. Scheduling some time to actually stop and take time out to make your nourishment choice. If you are needing to eat out, if you're needing to eat the lunch that you brought for yourself, if you're needing to do some grocery shopping on your lunch hour, schedule that time. Make it a pleasure of choosing those things that you will put into your body for fuel. That's what eating really is. It's fuel. 
Now, interesting enough, when you schedule this time for yourself, you don't want to skip over it so that when someone calls and says, could you meet with me on Zoom at two o'clock today? And you've scheduled a two o'clock walk for yourself. Don't say, oh, I can blow that off and I'll have the meeting instead. You have an appointment with yourself, for yourself. So say to that person, I can't do it at two, but I could do it after three, or I could do it tomorrow morning, but don't give up the time you've scheduled for your own physical nourishment and movement. Make that just as important as picking up your child from school or dropping off something that you promised to write and deliver to your boss or something that you scheduled with your accountant or your lawyer. Make yourself at least as important as everyone else in your life. You don't have to make yourself more important unless you'd like to, but make yourself at least important as everything else is. So schedule something in every day. I'd like to challenge you all who are listening to go to your smartphone and write in for at least a week, if not the rest of the month, some time for yourself. Now, let's talk about nourishment and let's talk about movement. First of all, I'm not a nutritionist, but I know how to make healthy choices because I've paid attention. Healthy choices for what I'm going to eat. Let's face it, having a diet that does not include processed foods is usually best for us. That means fast foods primarily. So the more you eat of proteins and plants, the better for you yourself. You're making those choices that are good for you. The more you have no refined sugar, the better it is. Natural sugars, natural or raw sugars. The more you eat no bad fats, cut the bad fats out. Those are usually deep fried things, breaded things. Good fats are important. So actually choosing non-fat foods very often are not that great for you because instead they've substituted various kinds of sugars or sugar replacements uh, in that food. So you can eat real food. It's an important thing to do and do it by looking at what has good fats, what has no refined sugars, what is mostly plant-based and what are really healthy, real proteins. So that's a very simple thing to know about, but it's also very simple to do. Again, challenge yourself. Let's see if for a week you can choose plant-based foods, real proteins, real foods, no processed foods, no fast foods. Let's see if you cannot choose refined sugars. Let's see if you cannot choose fats that are bad for you. See what happens after just seven days, and you might be surprised at how much more focused you are, how much more attention you can pay to things instead of feeling scattered, how much you can recall and focus on what it is you want to do. The brain is highly affected by what we eat. So is our energy level. You might be surprised after one week, don't say it's a diet, one week of healthy choices for nourishment that you will actually feel better. You'll have more energy. You'll sleep better. You'll be more interested in things. You'll feel more alert. All of those things can happen by simply making healthy choices, not dieting, but nourishing yourself with something good that you want to put into your body. Now, the second part, the movement, I know a lot about. I'm not a nutritionist, but I am a movement expert. I've been teaching movement and dance and exercise, ooh, that word, all of my adult life. And let me tell you my personal story so that you know about that just a little bit. Many people look at me and they say, oh, you move really well. You can bend over and pick things up from the floor. You can reach, you can turn, you can dance, you can move. Uh, you're not really overweight. So 
What do you know about challenges or limitation or how it feels to be in discomfort or pain? Well, I'd like to tell you, I'll be 70 my next birthday, which is in May, and I have chosen to feel as good as I feel and to move as well as I move. I was born with a mild form of spina bifida and a mild form means that I was not in a wheelchair early on. I was not highly limited, chronic and constant pain, even as a child. And as a child, I discovered very early on that the more I moved, any kind of movement, I didn't even know what exercise was, but I discovered that if I walked, if I skipped, if I laid on the floor and rolled around, that all of those things made me feel better. I had less pain. Debbie Rosas of the NIA Fitness Technique likes to say that movement is medicine, and it is. It can make us feel better. It can help us have a better quality of life. All the things that pills or medicine does, exercise movement can do. You don't have to push yourself. You don't have to be in boot camp. Uh, you don't have to challenge yourself. You don't have to drip perspiration to move moving, getting down on the floor and getting back up, walking briskly, all of those things, dancing around the house, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, parking at the other side of the parking lot and walking all the way to the door of the store or the building that you're entering. All those kinds of things that you can incorporate into your day will give you a better quality of life because it's moving your joints, your ligaments, your tendons, your muscles. All of that needs to be moved in order to be in good working order. I always say we mostly take care of our cars much better than we take care of our bodies because we want them to work well right? When we're ready to use the car, we want to know that there's oil in there and gas in there and that the tires are have enough air. But what about ourselves? We want to know that our fingers will work and that our spine will work and that we can move our body in a way that makes things not so challenging, not so difficult. We want greater ease. We want greater comfort, which in turn gives us better quality of life very important to choose to incorporate as much movement into your life as possible. Now, again, movement doesn't have to be a trial, a challenge. It can be something that's actually fun and enjoyable. It can be something that you do a little bit of every day, but ideally you also, in addition to incorporating it into your life, you also Make sure that you set a time for movement, whether it's walking or getting down on the floor and stretching and rolling around or going to a class like yoga or Tai Chi or something that you like. That is key and critical and important. If you don't like what you're doing for physical movement, you will not keep it up. So find something that you like. And that brings me to the movement portion of the show. Uh, this episode is going to show you one of the 21 tools of the Ageless Grace Brain Health Program that I did research on for seven years and created for one reason, to give us all something that we might like to do, enjoy doing, be stimulated by, that it would be different all the time when we do it, not the same thing over and over again, and that we would actually look forward to it. Sounds hard to believe, doesn't it? But it's actually possible to do that. And what this particular tool that we do, uh, there are 21 of them, does is it allows you lots of choices and spontaneity. So first of all, I like to do it to music. One exercise tool to a song. So this is something you can practice between now and the next episode of Living a Graceful Life to incorporate a little movement into your daily life. It's actually been shown that 10 minutes a day of dedicated movement, not just walking to and from your car or taking the stairs, those are sort of added bonuses, but actually saying, I'm going to set aside 15 minutes this morning and I'm going to do that's dedicated to me, to my quality of life. That 10 minutes to 15 minutes a day can be wonderful for not only your body, 
but your brain, especially if you're doing something that's unique or different or new that you're experimenting with. In the first episode of Living a Graceful Life, we did something called Spelling Bee, and it's where we spelled the words Win Win TV with their nose, with their elbow, the other elbow, with the belly button, with their knee or our foot. So you can spell any word at any time in any language in print block letters or in cursive. And that's a wonderful thing to do for 10 or 15 minutes every day. You can spell lots of words. Uh, so know that you can spell with your body and that's called spelling B and the B stands for body. Right now, we're gonna do another tool or exercise and it's called get down, get up. So I'm gonna play some music, one simple song, whatever music you have is perfectly fine. It needs to be something you enjoy. And the music stimulates the body and brain to keep the beat. And it's something you like, maybe you even wanna sing out loud as you do it and sing along with the song that you choose. Your phone, your phonograph, your vinyl, your uh, Spotify, whatever it is that you use for music works fine. So let's start the song. Battery, 90%. Connector to Denise's iPad. And then you're going to do get down, get up. So find a comfortable chair and be seated when you join this. And do it with me. So here we go. We go down, clap, up, clap, down, clap, up. So there's always a beat between the down and the up. And it could be any kind of beat. So we could go down, touch your thighs, and reach up and touch your thighs. Now, in time to the music. Down, tap, up, tap. Maybe go all the way to the floor, and maybe not. You can also go down with one hand or alternating hand. So down, tap, up, tap, down, tap, up, tap, down, tap, up, tap, down, tap. And it needs to be your comfort zone, your range of motion. So it could be down, tap, up, tap, down, tap, up. But notice the core of my body and my actual physical heart is moving. So down, tap, up, tap. That's my range of motion. Now, what if you wanted to do something different besides tapping your thighs? And you might go down, clap, like I said at the beginning, down, clap, up, clap. And you want to do it ideally in time to the beat of the music, whatever song you're playing. If this is too fast, then choose a slower song or do it half time. Now, what if we wanted to be a little silly and creative? So how about if we touch our head instead of clap our hands like this, tap, down, tap, up, tap, down, tap, up, tap. What if we wanted to be more silly and we wanted to touch our belly button? So it's down, tap, up, tap, down, tap, up, tap, down, tap, up, tap, down, tap, up, tap, down, tap, up, tap. Now, all if you did only one side like this, down, tap, up and down with one hand. But notice how the core of my body's moving. My hip flexors, my heart, my abdominals, my spine. This is more exercise than it looks like it might be. Now, let's try the other side. Down, up. And again, that tap of the thigh can be anything. We might even do a shimmy in between like up, shimmy, touch, shimmy, up, shimmy, touch, shimmy, up, shimmy, down, shimmy, up. Anything that makes you laugh and that's different, stimulating, thinking of things you can do. What if we used a word like wow in between? So it goes like this. Up, wow, down, wow, up, wow, down, wow, up, wow, down, wow, up, wow, down. Or what if you went up, up? Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. So up, there's the beat, down, there's the beat. Up, beat, down, beat. Up, beat, down, beat. Up, and you're sitting down. It's a great core exercise. 
All the tools or exercises that I'll show you in these episodes are seated. Meaning anyone can do it of any age and you're seated, whether you're seven years old or whether you're 70 or whether you're 107 because it causes your brain and body to communicate with each other to figure how to do this. Now, what about a crisscross? Crisscross up and then crisscross down. Up, up, down, down. Up, up, down, down. Or slower. Down, down. Up, up, down, down. Up, up, down. Now let's go back to that one hand up and one hand down. So again, you can slow it down for a while if you want to, or you can speed it up. Up, tap, down, tap, up, tap, down, tap. And then let's switch it midstream to keep us interested. This hand goes up and this hand goes down. Up, up, down, down. Wonderful job. Uh, congratulations if you did that with me. And I don't know about you, but my heart's beating faster. I feel warmer. I feel more stimulated. So simple that you can do at home in any chair. Uh, so I invite you to practice the spelling bee where you spell words with different parts of your body in the air and to do the get down, get up, uh, where you get down, have a beat of some kind in between, get up and then have a beat of some kind in between. So I'd like to thank you uh, for joining me today. I'd like to refer you to agelessgrace.com, A-G-E-L-E-S-S-G-R-A-C-E. -E -E. That's the website for Ageless Grace Brain Health. There are all kinds of classes, workshops. There's a seminar that's four hours long that you can sign up for to learn more about how to practice uh, the 21 tools on your own that will help you with a better quality of brain function that will help you avoid cognitive decline and that will keep your body in functional order. It's fun, it's easy, it's simple. There are also certifications that are 14 hours long, spread out over several days so that you can get certified to teach the program. And there are products. We have a three DVD set. We have a playbook. Doesn't that sound like a lot more fun than a workbook? A playbook telling you some ideas for each of the 21 different exercises or tools that we do. And we also have flashcards so that you can use the flashcards to give yourself ideas about what you can do from a seated position to engage your brain and body in a dialogue that can give you a better quality of life. So we hope that you'll visit our website agelessgrace.com and learn more about Ageless Grace. There are also free handouts and there are wonderful articles about different kinds of uh, things, including blogs about Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or dementia or diabetes, whatever you might want to know more about. We have blogs and guest experts who are talking about those all on our website. We hope you'll check it out. Now, I want to thank you for joining this episode of Living a Graceful Life. Again, I'm Denise Medved, your host, and I uh, will be back again in the next episode, and we'll be talking more about not the physical aspect, but specifically the brain, and what does that have to do with a better quality of life? So I want to remind you again, it's never too late to begin making choices to create the life that you want. So what if we all did one small act of kindness for a stranger tomorrow? I think we could change the world. See you next time.